Hello, my name is Pat Jones. I'm professor of biology at Stanford here, and I'm also the chair of the Undergraduate Studies Committee at Stanford in the biology department. And uh, in that role, I'm talking to you today about biology and about the undergraduate major in biology. Uh, biology is one of the most ex exciting areas of the sciences these days. There have been so many advances in understanding the ba basic mechanisms of life, how living things are put together. And of course, uh, many recent advances related to understanding what it takes to be healthy and what contributes to, um, to the occurrence of disease. Uh, lots of focus, of course, on developing new therapies for disease. And we hope lots of attention to new therapies for uh, improving the environment and helping the world uh, accommodate the growing population and the diminishing resources that we have. So there are many areas of biology that are very exciting these days, and biology is, um, in parallel, a very exciting undergraduate major. There is a requirement for uh, chemistry, uh, five, four or five lecture courses, a couple of lab courses, which students generally start along with calculus in the freshman year. Uh, in the sophomore year, they start the biology core, which is a three uh, a quarter course sequence that exposes students to basic knowledge in all areas of biology from molecular biology and biochemistry up through ecology and, and evolution. Uh, generally in the junior year, uh, students take the physics and the major requires two courses in physics uh, with labs. And beginning in the junior year and extending through the senior year, the students are also taking their biology electives uh, which generally, well, the requirement is for 24 units, which would average out to perhaps one course per quarter. Now, th so those are the basic, uh, the basic requirements uh, for the biology major. And in response to student um, requests a number of years ago, maybe five or six years ago, uh, the department developed six areas of specialization so students can uh, graduate with a BS in biology but indicated on the diploma is with this area of specialization. And the six current areas of specialization include biochemistry and biophysics, cell and molecular biology, um, neurobiology, microbes and immunity, um, ecology and evolution, and marine biology. I want to just take a minute to mention marine biology because this is really quite an unusual feature of a biology department is to provide strength in marine biology, which Stanford is able to do because of the branch of our department at Hopkins Marine Station down on Monterey Bay, uh, next to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Uh, we have a cadre of very strong faculty down there, and students have the opportunity to take courses there that fulfill requirements towards the electives of the major um, in either winter, spring, or summer uh, quarters. This is one of one aspect of biology, and really of all of science, is the degree to which the barriers that used to separate different areas of biology, so neurobiology, well, that's different than immunology, and that's different than endocrinology, is different than basic cell biology. Well, these barriers are totally falling apart, and so every system in the body affects every other system, and so there's now neuroimmunology or neuroendocrine immunology. And so, um, so biologists need to have a strong general background in order to be able to make those connections and to have the basic connections or the basic foundations so that they, they have some sufficient understanding to know who else they need to go, go talk to. And one of the things about our department is that Stanford has ma continued to maintain a single biology department. And that enables this sort of cross information between the cell and molecular developmental biology, which is the lower levels of organization, and the ecology, evolution, global ecosystem, which are the higher levels of, organ of organization within biology. So there, we now have ecologists that are using a lot of DNA techniques to help understand um, evolution uh, interactions between organisms. I think one of the great things about the life sciences at Stanford, which includes the biology department as well as the medical school departments, is this um, strong interest in 
um, pioneering the next set of techniques that will allow us to ask the questions that will get us to a new level of understanding. And the, and the sort of rapid fire spread of these new techniques across campus. Uh, one of the things about the life sciences community here at Stanford is that it's very collaborative and very interactive with not many barriers that prevent faculty in one department from interacting with other departments. So the techniques spread rapidly and can be used in other labs even before they're, they're initially published and that allows us all to advance more quickly in, in what we're doing. We have several hundred outstanding biomedical researchers at our School of Medicine, virtually all of which welcome undergraduates enthusiastically into their labs. And especially for those students interested in the health sciences, this provides an opportunity to work with faculty who may spend a few afternoons a week in the clinic. There may be medical students, residents, clinical fellows in the lab. Um, and so students can be exposed more to what uh, medical school is like and what working in medical school is like um, as they are doing research in an area that may be a fundamental basic mechanisms in biology or may be directly related to particular clinical problems. And many of our students have done undergraduate research projects there. Um, but we all feel that there's nothing like working in a real lab on a real research problem to give students a real perception for what research is like, whether they end up going on into research themselves or not. We have a very experienced and helpful student services staff. Our student services office is room 108 in the lobby of the Gilbert Building, and they are open uh, most mornings and afternoons uh, during the week. Um, the Student Services Office is also the home to our BioBridge peer advisors who are available in the afternoon to provide peer advising to students.